Drawing some extra cards with the One Ring is pretty sweet, but what if instead of drawing some extra cards, you try to untap it again and again and again and again and draw your entire deck, maybe as early as turn four, in a deck that has no colored mana to win the game storm style with Ether Flux Reservoir? That's what we're gonna find out today. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known to Saffron Olive, and today we are storming off and drawing our entire deck, maybe as early as turn 4, with a one ring in Paradox Engine. So let's talk about this super sweet deck, jump into some games, see it in action. So we're building around two key cards. The one ring is key card number one, it just taps to draw, well it taps to add a burden counter, and then we draw cards equal to the burden counter. So the first time we tap it one card second time two cards third time three cards and this is kind of the core of our deck yeah eventually if we make it to our upkeep we might have to take some damage but we're not really planning on getting to our upkeep once we start doing one ring things we're planning on winning the game right away because of paradox engine paradox engine says when we cast a spell untap all non-land permanents we control this includes the one ring so if we get both of these cards together we tap one ring we draw a card then we cast a spell maybe the spell we drew off of the one ring then untaps the one ring now we tap one ring and draw two cards that'll give us more spells to cast to trigger paradox engine time to have the one ring and now we draw three cards and then four cards and next thing you know we've drawn literally our entire deck on turn four so of course we do need one more thing to make this work. If you think about what we're talking about, Paradox Engine on taps of one ring, one ring draws us an absurd number of cards. We need mana to keep casting spells to trigger our Paradox Engine to untap our one ring. For this, we turn to an absurd number of mana rocks because Paradox Engine untaps all of our non-land permanents. That means every time we cast a spell, it's gonna untap our Cold Steel Hearts, Mind Stones, Guardian Idol, Power Stone Shards, the Might Stone and Weak Stone. So we just fill our deck with mana rocks. These ramp us into the one ring in Paradox Engine and then as we're comboing we cast whatever random spell we have in our hand it untaps all of our mana rocks it untaps our one ring then we tap our one ring we draw three four or five whatever number of cards equal to the burden counters then we float all of our mana from our mana rocks then we cast a spell then we untap all of our mana rocks we untap our one ring we do it again next thing you know we've drawn through our entire deck and probably have like a hundred mana floating or something so this package makes all the mana in the world, draws all the cards in our deck. How do we win the game? The last piece of the puzzle is Aether Flux Reservoir, which is essentially just a colorless storm card. Whenever we cast a spell, we gain a life for each spell we've cast before it this turn. During our combo turns, we're gonna cast 10, 20, our entire deck if we want to, literally our entire deck if we feel like it. And then we can pay 50 life to 50 something. So we just play the reservoir, then we cast a bunch of spells as we're comboing off, hit our opponent for 50 to win the game. Otherwise, Mystic Forge, backup card advantage helps us find the one ring Karn Silex for removal a forsaken monument gives us even more mana now that we need it the other important piece of the deck is Karn the great creator which mostly just tutors more combo pieces from the sideboard if we can't find a paradox engine Karn grabs one or our ether flux reservoir Karn grabs one uh, mystic forge removal like cityscape level or might soon a weak stone Karn Silex so Karn even though I hate the card it adds a lot of consistency to the deck the other cool part of being a colorless deck is we get to play a million utility lands a bunch of scry lands artifact tutor lands a uh, blast zone for removal some life gain and radiant fountain so we get a lot of weird value out of our all colorless mana base and that is the one ring paradox that's our deck for today before we jump into the games one last super quick thing the deck is it's not a budget deck exactly but the deck is only 29 total rares and mythics on magic arena and some of those are colorless utility lands that you really don't need like the deck doesn't need labyrinth of Scofos, like it's fine to have, or even the Mycosynth Gardens, like it's an okay addition to the deck, but it's not like you need them. So I think if you trim back on some of those not super necessary utility lands, you could probably put this deck together for around 25 rares and mythics, which isn't quite budget magic range, but also pretty cheap compared to a lot of decks on Magic Arena. So anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling. That's our deck for today. It's gonna make a lot more sense what you see it in action. So let's jump into the games. Thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoy it and i'll be back in a bit for the wrap up need some magic cards well you can snag them from our sponsor card kingdom over at cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish all right it is colorless storm time paradoxical ring i don't know what to call this deck exactly but we are trying to uh do some ridiculous things with the one ring and paradox engine this and it is a land away from being good but we have a scry land so i think it's worth it like 
so we don't have the one ring, but our backup one ring's Mystic Forge. Well, okay, we also have the one ring. Can we find a land? Oh boy, okay. Well, this is risky. If we hit a land, this hand, I think, just goes off super hard. Gala Greeters for our opponent. Oh, praise the magic gods. All right. So, uh, we hit land number two, Cold Steel Heart. Uh... <laughs> Part of the fun of this deck is choosing a color with Cold Steel Heart. We have zero colored cards in our deck, so it's mostly what scares our opponent the most. So if they're a creature deck, choose like red, so they think we have removal, or like uh, just it's basically just troll value. Opponent, okay, elves, a eh? elvish war master with another land. All right, now this hand is starting to look awesome. How quickly can we win? So we could one ring, but it's probably better just to develop our mana. Yeah, let's run out both of our tap mana rocks. Uh, stay on red. We might have a double red sweeper, elves. <laughs> Watch out for our brother's hood end. <laughs> uh, so we're up to six mana. Next turn. So something to keep in mind is when we play Paradox Engine, we need a spell to cast to start the combo. So we would kind of like to Mind Stone Paradox Engine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, if we draw land, do we win? One, two, three, four, five. If we draw land, I think we win this turn. If we don't draw land, then I guess we one ring and stay alive and try to win the next turn. Blast zone. Do we win? So we play the land. We can play our Paradox Engine. We have three mana rocks. So now whenever we cast a spell, we get to untap. Now we can Mind Stone. Untap everything. Four mana. So float all of our mana. One ring. Also, super important note for this deck. <laughs> If you press QQ on your keyboard, it will automatically tap all of your stuff, which makes this combo way easier. Mystic Forge. Untap everything, including the One Ring. I mean, now we should be infinite. Float all of our mana. Draw with the One Ring. Play Karn. Untap everything. Float all of our mana. Exile the land. All right. Well, I mean, now... So we're drawing... Every spell we cast, we're drawing four cards next turn we got a card that can tutor something out this is why the one ring is like such a huge deal for decks like this it's basically impossible for us to fizzle now because of the snowballing card advantage of the one ring like we've played paradox engine decks in the past the problem is in the past sometimes you you fizzle and you just don't hit a spell now that becomes impossible let's get our ether flux reservoir with the card play the reservoir tap the runway draw four magic the gathering cards <laughs> It's absurd. It's absurd. <laughs> Float all over mana. Play Guardian Idol. Now we start gaining life. So now, I don't even know if we got to really draw cards anymore. I think we've cast enough spells that we can just cast our hand and gain enough life to win with Reservoir. So this is what, turn four? Turn four kill? Not, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> not bad. Turn four. Make all the mana. Draw our entire deck. Play some Aether Flux Reservoirs. <laughs> Well, good try, elves. Good try. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are doing busted things. Uh, Reservoir you. 50 to the face. GG. GG. And, uh, well, let's just keep doing that. That was pretty good. <laughs> All right. It is combo time. <laughs> we are going to see if we can draw our deck here on turn four with uh, the one ring. I mean, so if you decide to play this deck, what the deck wants with Paradox Engine, we will we will keep that one. So what you want is Mana Rock into a four drop. Uh, Mystic Forge, Karn, whatever. Like that is the draw you want every time. That's what makes the deck work. If you're playing your four drops on turn four, not fast enough usually. When you're playing your four drops on turn three, the deck sometimes feels busted. Opponent Wolf Willowhaven, sure. Another Mystic Forge. This is interesting. Well, we'll keep the land. How do we want to do this? Karn shutting down the foundry seems reasonable. Let's just Karn tutor up a Forsaken Monument. Forsaken Monument puts the, the mana into oh, Karn, okay. So <laughs> there is one card in existence that we really don't want to face, and that is Karn. Uh, Karn kind of wrecks our deck. Because we can't have our artifacts for mana, so it kind of shuts down everything. We'll keep the land. So the, there is a tiny bit of good news. And the tiny bit of good news is we do have a, our Karn. Our most realistic way to kill a Karn is to use our Karn to turn artifacts into creatures and attack our opponent's Karn. 
So that's our that's our current game plan. We're in a point. We're at a point where if we can, oh Nick, those if we can get rid of this Karn, we can probably win. I think we need two turns. But if we can, oh, are you gonna blow up a land? We kind of want our opponent to blow up a land here. If they blow up a land, that means the coast is clear to kill the Karn and. No, like going down a mana hurts, but having a Karn hurts way more. Our opponent's gonna turn on their one one, attack our Karn. Ooh, ooh, wait. Does this mean we get to kill the Karn? If we get to kill this Karn, we we're in really good shape. I don't think we can combo this turn because we don't have the mana to Paradox Engine and play a spell. We're what one mana short? We only have one mana rock. I think we turn our yeah Mystic Pizza Oven <laughs> into uh into a four four. Attack the Karn. Do you have re okay, carned out. Well, how do we set ourselves up to win next turn is the question. We can't win this turn. For Zaga Monument gives us an extra mana for all of our lands and most of our mana rocks. Yeah, we're gonna hold on to this Mind Stone. It's a cheap spell to start the combo. All right, opponent, show us Karn, I guess. Like Cavalier of Thorns, we do not care about that. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the One Ring, don't care. For Zaga Monument, don't care. Are we gonna beat Mono Green Devotion? I mean, I, unless we get super unlucky, I think we just go infinite here. Exile the land, Mind Stone. So, one awkward thing in this deck, <laughs> Forsaken Monument only doubles colorless mana. Unfortunately, Cold Steel Heart only makes colored mana. It's still necessary because it's a two mana mana rock, but it is a little awkward with a monument. We'll play the Mind Stone, untap everything, and we should be off to the races. Uh, QQ. Tap everything. Mind Stone. Untap everything. Uh, tap everything. Power Stone Shard. Untap everything. QQ. <laughs> My Stone and Weak Stone. Tap it. Untap it. Draw a couple cards. We don't care about the Cavalier. Like, we're winning through the Cavalier here. At some point, I guess, we should probably get our Finisher. I don't even know if it... Like, we're... At this point, it doesn't matter what we do. Opponent, an opponent realizes that and scoops it up. Like, once we get to this point... Our, our choices don't really matter. We're going to win no matter no matter what we do. There's no no real losing at this point with two cards and all the card draw, the foundry. So, yeah, sweet, sweet. Wise words, Frodo. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It is colorless. Colorless, paradoxical, ring, storm time. Did we break? Oh, oh, okay. So, this end, we do kind of want one more land. Uh, Right now, we have... Okay, there's a land. Well, now this hand is wonderful. Uh, mana rock into one ring. GG. GG, opponent. Mounted? What are you doing over there, opponent? Well, let's play the Scry land. Eh, I guess you can never have too many one rings. Cold Steel Heart. The worst of our mana rock since it's tapped. Opponent. Well, next time we get to play in one ring and just start drawing cards. Opponent. Passes. Well, Buried Ruin. One ring and you so now we need paradox engine basically and we should win banishing light all right well that's fine i'm glad we kept the second one ring the one ring is like the engine that makes the deck unfizzleable essentially now play the scry land cold steel heart to the bottom uh i guess we can mind stone into the one ring actually let's <laughs> Let's go with the fair reservoir plan. Our opponent might be an aggro. I don't know what our opponent's doing, honestly. But gaining some incidental life isn't horrible. All right, sure. Well, oh, there's a paradox engine. Oh, we are super close to going infinite. One, two, three, four. Oh, wait. Can we can we go infinite this turn? So five mana, play paradox, land mind stone, untap, three mana, power stone shard, untap. Okay, maybe. We're going to try... We probably don't go fully infinite here because because uh, we're only going to get one draw from the one ring. We need to hit a spell with our one one ring draw. If we hit a spell, then we probably just win here. Any spell. Any, well, any spell we can cast. Karn. Oh, wow. Okay, that's like multiple spells. That is probably our best draw, honestly. All right, Karn, untap everything. One ring, draw a couple more cards. Yeah, the one ring's busted. Oh, that's kind of a fizzle. Opponent, GG. And scoops it up. <laughs> the one ring is busted. It's busted. Okay. Uh, well, did we break it? I think so. <laughs> like, actually, this time, maybe we really did. All right. We are storming off with the one ring. 
doing some uh, paradoxic paradoxical thing. Ooh, okay, this hand is great. Let's play a scry land. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep a scry land. So one thing to keep in mind with the scry lands, uh, they're very good with Mystic Forge. So there are sometimes, sometimes an argument for holding on to them for Mystic Forge. Ooh, Inventor's Fair. Yeah, that's a... So we're getting to the point where we don't need more lands, but that's a land that's good enough to keep. All right, no thought seizes. Just let us play the one ring and crush you. Fragment reality. All right. Well, we're going to have to do it uh, the slow way. Paradox Engine. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we got to keep it. A little awkward with no mana rocks, but it still is one of our key combo pieces. Treacherous Blessing. Oh, this must be like a Doom Foretold deck. I haven't seen Doom Foretold in a minute. Those decks are kind of sweet. All right, we draw the Paradox on you. Play the land. Play the One Ring to let the drawing begin. So we really need some mana rocks. That's the one thing we're... We have all the four and five mana payoffs we could ever want. We have the One Ring. We have the Mystic Forge, the Paradox Engine. Opponent. Even your Fragment Realities. Fragment Reality is really good against us because we have nothing to put into play. So it's just one mana exile our stuff. Opponent plays the tap land and passes. Hmm, okay. Well, maybe we'll just keep drawing one rings. That's also acceptable. Huh, this is interesting. What do we do now? It's always fine to just draw more cards. We do have two Mystic Forges. I kind of like the idea of getting a Mystic Forge down because our opponent showed that they have a lot of removal for artifacts. If they're going to kill another artifact, I would rather it be Mystic Forge. All right, Invoke Despair, sure. Now let's get rid of the Silic so we don't want to draw... Mindstone's better. All right, so opponent hits us for six, draws three. Although, honestly, I don't know if we really care about getting invoked. Like, I guess the risk is they draw into, they draw into answers. All right, let's exile the land. Find another land. Play the Mindstone. Play the One Ring. And pass the turn. Do we win next turn? We just don't have enough mana rocks. We need to find some mana rocks. Doom foretold. All right. Uh huh. I don't know if Doom foretold's good against the One Ring or not. <laughs> it lets us sack our One Ring if we ever want to. All right. There's a mana rock. Awkwardly, actually, can we try to win here? I think we can try to win. I don't know if we're super likely to win, but we can try. Let's draw with the One Ring now to see to see what we hit. To know we know we're getting Cold Steel Heart. What's the second card? And we might want to exile something with Mystic Forge before. I, I think we got to sack the Forge. Yeah, we don't want to draw another land. So let's activate Mystic Forge. We need one more two mana rock, I think, and we win. Mind, okay, Mind Stone. Uh, all right, so now I don't think we need the Mystic Forge anymore. As good as it is, we have the One Ring, which is just better at this point. Uh, well, now I think we get to go for it. So draw the Mind Stone. Go to our main phase. Well, it is combo time. One, two, three, four, and five. So play Paradox Engine. So opponent needs instant speed interaction here, or else I'm pretty confident we just draw our deck and win. Storm off. Uh, let's play the land that doesn't have a trigger. <laughs> we don't want our opponent to have a trigger to be able to cast something in response to. Mindstone, untap. Because we really at least need this ring to untap. All right, so now we have two mana. One ring, draw three. One ring is an ungodly busted card. Uh, float all of our mana, Cold Steel Heart. I mean, I guess we need to draw one more two mana, one more two mana rock, and then we'll be infinite. Uh, all right, one ring. Can we hit a two drop? Can we hit a two drop? Our opponent even had interaction. They had double double removal spells for artifacts. Ooh, all right, there's Mindstone. All right, now this should officially be GG. Mindstone, untap everything. Yeah, I wonder if the One Ring should have been worded differently because this just doesn't <laughs> doesn't feel fair. It just, uh, I'm enjoying it. Oh, I am enjoying it for sure, but it does not feel fair. Hey, let's uh, tap it, draw five cards this time. And then I think we might float all of our mana. How about playing a Guardian Idol to untap our mana? And, uh, yeah, at this point, I don't... Like, I guess it's always kind of possible to fizzle, but I don't even know if that's true. I don't even know if it's possible to fizzle at this point. Float all of our mana, Cold Steel Heart, untap all of our mana, untap the One Ring, up to drawing seven Magic the Gathering cards now. Uh, we will draw them. And I think we have 
pretty much reached the point where we can just like stop drawing with the one ring, play the reservoir and just and just empty our hand and win. Something to keep in mind, it is possible if you just keep drawing, you will mill out eventually, but usually you get to this you get to this stage and you don't even need to you don't even need to draw anymore. The one ring has done its job. It's done its job. Now you can volcano it. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, we will play Mana Rock, gain some life, untap all of our stuff. QQ, tap all of our stuff, for Zanga Monument, untap all of our stuff, gain some life. What do we need, like two more spells probably for uh, for the Ether Flux Reservoir win? Abodent. <laughs> abodent. What do you feel about death? Uh, all right, so now all of our stuff taps for double mana and an opponent scoops it up. <laughs> Broke it. Broke it. Broke it. Everybody loves to hear a great comeback story. Never go. I feel like that's a personal attack on me for scooping early. Arena. No chill. <laughs> All right. Can anyone beat Colorless Storm? Uh, well, Sand is fine. So far, the answer, like, is, is this deck just literally busted? <laughs> so far, we are undefeated. Can anyone actually beat this deck? I'm sure it'll happen eventually, right? It's got to happen. It's got to happen sooner or later. The Sand is good, though. Oppo oh, guild oh no opponent oh i almost feel bad i love the guildgate deck but guildgates i've played many many guildgate decks guildgates really good against interacting with the board it makes big creatures it's got the sweeper i don't know what it's gonna do against our deck though there's a paradox engine too okay well guardian idol <laughs> and we have double power stone shard we're gonna make a lot of mana like we're actually getting pretty close to being infinite already opponent gonna Call the knight, Sir Cootius Root. <laughs> Grab a couple lands. Uh, well, we'll play Inventor's Fair and a Power Stone Shard and a Guardian Idol. One, two, three, four, five, six. I guess technically we still need two turns to win, don't we? With our current hand. We technically need two turns. All right, Gates of Blaze to up the storm count. <laughs> uh, opponent. We draw my oh that actually helps one two oh we're still one mana short hmm yeah if we had one more mana we could probably win here we could at least try i guess we don't have any card draw but karn can get mystic forge do we just play it i think we play power stone shard play a karn karn up probably the pizza oven yeah let's mystic forge hold on to the mind stone so all right we're we're set up to go infinite next turn we don't have a one ring, so I guess with just Mystic Forge, there is a fizzle rate. Opponent Gate Breaker Ram, casual, three mana, seven, seven. And I wonder why they cast that Gates Ablaze. <laughs> I mean, it isn't going to do anything this entire game, so I guess it doesn't really matter, but opponent mazes in, snags a gate, grows a ram, and passes. Well, we gain a life. Ooh, Forsaken Monument 2. Okay. One, two, three, uh, play the, play the Paradox Engine, Mind Stone, untap everything, uh, do a little tapping, and how about a Forsaken Monument to untap everything, and let's do a little tapping, Mystic Forge, untap everything, top card is a Cold Steel Heart, okay, so we just need, we just need a, a One Ring, essentially, ooh, double land, Okay, we can tutor with Karn. So I guess we can tutor with Karn and get Might Stone and Weak Stone to draw cards. And then we still have another Karn, so we can get the Ether Flux later. Could we have just won with Ether Flux? Maybe we had enough life. Nah, I don't know, we're gonna keep comboing. Uh, draw a couple cards. Another Pizza Oven. Another Pizza Oven's actually pretty good. Two of them. Two of them's gonna make it very hard for us to fizzle. Another Might Stone and Weak Stone. Draw a couple more cards. Still no One Ring. Where are all of our One Rings? Uh, okay, well, we have like 60 mana floating. Mystic Forge number two. Untap everything. Tap everything. Play a Karn. Now I think we're going to go for it. Now I think we just get the Aether Flux Reservoir. We've cast so many spells. I only, I think we only need to cast like two spells. Get the Aether Flux. Make some manas. Play the Aether Flux. Untap. Tap everything. Power Stone Shard. Oh, there's the One Ring. And opponent scoops it up. <laughs> I'm almost starting to feel bad. I feel like our deck might be too good. Is it too good for the format? <laughs> Wild. All right. Can anyone beat Colorless Storm? 
the paradox of the one rig. Oh, uh, so far no. That else is another good hand. Uh, I will also say one thing I like about this. So we've played paradox engine decks in the past. Past paradox engine decks. One of the big issues with them. So obviously, from a win and loss perspective, one of the issues was just consistency, where sometimes you'd fizzle. One of the things, though, that I oh boy, okay, well, uh, hopefully our opponent doesn't have a finisher. Double lane line of abundance land of war means our opponent has. Our opponent just might okay, Kiora. Our opponent might just be doing something more degenerate than we are at the moment, or at least have a more degenerate start. Like, we have a good draw, too. We have we have turn three Karn into the Forge of Forsaken Monument, but our opponent double ley line is ridiculous. Re so they have seven mana with one land. That's kind of absurd. I think we might... Oh, 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 oh. the one land storm the festival. Oh, growth. Oh, does this hit an... If this hits a Nykthos, my god. Nykthos. 12 Devotion. Draws a bunch of cards. Do you have a land? Okay, so we just gotta win this turn. We just... That's it. <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> okay. Well, it is possible to beat this deck. We have figured out... We have figured out how. You just gotta... You just gotta make 7 mana with 1 land on turn 3. And have all the Storm the Festivals and the Kiora <laughs> and the Nykthos. <laughs> oh, they really do have all the Storm the Festivals. They have three. St what a weird hand. Double Leyline, Elvish Mystic, Kiora, three Storm the Festival. Oh, and a Karn. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> the good times have come to an end. Mono Green Devotion. Okay. Apparently they're more busted than we are that game. <laughs> all right. On to the next one. So we have suffered a defeat, but uh, hopefully bear chill bud hopefully we get back to our winning ways that last match went so quickly i couldn't even tell my my story one of the things i like about this deck what i was trying to say before uh <laughs> before we got soundly crushed by mono grade what i was trying to say is one of the things i like about this deck compared to old paradox engine decks is old paradox engine decks took forever to win the game like you would have to do this weird like tap your stuff and sack a mind stone and sack a heater and archive to try to draw cards and think through all these lines it was very it was very very time consuming and annoying to sit through this deck isn't really like that the one ring is so incredibly broken that we actually win very quickly when we combo it only takes a minute or two so it's much less painful to play with or against time wise in old versions Voldir and epic ya yeah, which i think is actually a big upside for people's sanity's opponent all the one drops Ooh, blast zone hmm that could be relevant at some point well let's play a guardian idol this hand's weird so we don't really have any combo pieces reckless impulse another phoenix chick this blast zone's looking juicy though we might just we might just win with blast zone oh there's the pizza oven oh now we gotta think can we afford to play the pizza oven the mystic forge or do we have to blast zone this turn so we dropped to eight for sure they gotta have burn in their deck do we just have to sweep this turn oh, let's yeah let's go blast zone well i mean this is Oh, wow, they're just playing into it. Swift Spear, okay. Yep, yep. Come on, opponent. Do you have another one drop? Show us another one drop. Play with fire. That's technically a one drop. That's not what we meant, though. Play with fire down to 10. Come on. One more one drop, opponent. Show us another Show us another one drop. And the festivities. All right. Well, I mean, good enough. Good enough. So we're going to get a <laughs> essentially a hard wrath with this blast zone. A five for one. One. <laughs> So we dropped to nine. I think that actually worked out. It seems like it seems like it should be hard for our opponent to recover from this because we're gonna get this Forsaken Monument down. And among all the other text and the ramping and so forth, it also just gains us a ridiculous amount of life for no reason. Play with fire down to seven. Yeah, I feel pretty safe now. Let's play the Skyland. Radiant Fountain. I don't even think we need it. Like all of our colorless spells are Radiant Fountains once we have forsaken monument so i don't even think we need the life gain even though this is like the best matchup for it so we get to play the forsaken monument double our mana and pass the turn leave up our guardian idol in case our opponent uh, draws a hasty creature who okay so well now we'll play a pizza oven gain a couple life the mystic forge uh top card's a waste get rid of that 
So we want Paradox Engine or One Ring. Those are those are the cards that pretty much put it away. I don't play another Mystic Forge. Yeah, let's still leave up this Guardian Idol just in case. We don't really want to take haste damage for no reason, if we can avoid it. Uh, play the Gardens, and yeah, I guess we exile the land. We could still find a One Ring or something. Oh, hmm, okay, well, <laughs> in that case, uh, let's play the One Ring, gain some life, and well, I like where we're at now. Opponent going to Lightning Strike our face down to six, sure, 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 back up to eight. And yeah, we've just gained too much life now for our opponent to really do anything. One ring. And pass the turn. Well, now we're a Paradox Engine away from going legitimately infinite. Opponent's gonna sag the blood, discard a land. Well, apparently we can beat aggro, thanks to Blast Zone. I guess we got a little lucky. We were only playing one Blast Zone, so it's fortunate it showed up when it did. Uh, all right, draw a card. Mightstone Stone and Weak Stone. Well, yeah, I guess we play it. Draw some cards. We don't really care about the Swift Spear anymore. We're just gonna we're just gonna gain so much life. Oh, there's Karn. That should that should mostly do it, right? Do we even? Need, I don't even know if we need to try to win here. Like we're at that stage where again it's like, does it even matter what we do? We're just in such a such a commanding position. I think we're just gonna play stuff and then win next turn. Probably could have tried to win this turn with Karn if we really wanted to. But we'll just make a just make a big board, gain a bunch of life, play a bunch of mana rocks, put it on blue, gotta bluff those counters, Radiant Fountain, back up to 17. All right, opponent. Well, 17 us. 17 us. We'll tear an Epicure. All right. It's a good one. It's a pretty good, pretty good magic card. Opponent hits us to 15. Well, now the only question is, does our opponent actually sit through the entire combo? We will one ring, draw some cards. Uh and the time the time has come to close this out. Karn gains some life. Tutor up. So I think we get uh, Paradox Engine. I think that's the correct I like with the Paradox Engine we can't we can't lose here. Uh float everything. Well, we have a lot of mana, don't we? Paradox Engine. And Cold Seal Heart untap it and so eventually we just need to find another Karn I was gonna say an ether flux reservoir but a Karn is an ether flux reservoir uh all right so float our mana X on the land another one ring play the Karn Karn for the ether flux reservoir and this is what I was saying though like the combo actually ends pretty quickly like it, it doesn't have to be some painful sit there for 20 minutes. It wins by so much thanks to the one ring that the whole process is actually over in like two minutes. Once you once you get things set up, like it happens very, very, very fast, which I really appreciate compared to old Paradox Engine decks. Like this one is just much, much faster and less, less painful. The old ones were very tooth pulley to actually sit through. Well, Power Stone Shard, untap. <laughs> And at this point, you just cast it. Like, what does it matter what we do? We have 100 mana floating. We have, like, we have everything. We have everything any Magic player could ever want in the history of the game. We just got to scroll around to find our, uh, where's our Aether Flux Reservoir? Ah, there it is. Opponent, how do you feel about 50 to the vase? <laughs> well, that was a good Blast Zone. That was a very good Blast Zone. All right. Well, as long as there's not two lane line of abundances, we're good. All right. It is the One Ring Paradox time. We are just casually breaking uh, breaking historic <laughs> with the one ring in all colorless lands. This hand is sketchy. I'm curious if this hand is going to work, but I kind of want to find out. Oh, we got to put Karn to the bottom. The no mana rock hand is always frightening. The double one ring hand is a little excited. Ooh, Lanamore. Okay. Didn't we just scry Karn to the bottom? Arena. Arena. Well, okay, is it Elves or is it Mono Green Devotion? That's the real, oh, oh, oh boy. Okay, well, opponent is, oh no. Opponent's trying to play a Scry deck. <laughs> yes, okay, with the new Lord of the Rings cards. Oh no, now I feel bad. Oh, this is, this is kind of like punching a baby in the face. It just feels lost, oh, but... Oh, opponent's trying to do cool, like, janky stuff, and our deck is good, and they're playing Lost 
Lost Isle Calling, and a bunch of scry stuff. Okay, Elisaur Shepherd. Mm -hmm. We also have a Karn Silex, so we get to blow up their entire board just just in case. Just in case they were actually, oh, will we scry? Get a counter on the Lost Isle. I appreciate that someone is trying to do this. I mean, I think we're still gonna one ring and absolutely wreck them, but but I do I do appreciate opponent that you're trying to do something cool. I'm sorry that <laughs> that we're just playing a absolutely busted deck. All right, opponent. Oh, okay. Fall of Gilglad. Scry two would have been so good with that enchantment still on the battlefield. Uh, well, let's. How do we even do this? Might stone a weak stone first. Yeah, might stone a weak stone. Draw a couple cards. Uh, cold steel heart on eh, red. Let's go red this time. We're officially an is it deck now. Oh, the saga does nothing because there's no creature. Oh, scry. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes, yeah, scry. Scry. Scry away. Opponent. Oh, you should have held that opponent. You should have held that. It's even an instant and it scries. That's like literally the best card in your deck against our deck. Unfortunately, we have a lot of muscular art of like the Mindstone of Weakstone is not one of our important artifacts. It is our upgraded Hedron Archive. It's our Hedron Archive that we don't need to sacrifice essentially. Uh, all right, that Saga was not very impressive. Ooh, when you scry, put a counter on it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Three mana, three, two. Settle, settle down, scry deck, settle down. <laughs> that could turn into a four three next turn <laughs> uh just kidding there's not gonna be a next turn <laughs> i do feel a little guilty about this one all right paradox engine <laughs> and how about a crystal grotto do a little scrying uh cold steel heart that's worth keeping play the mystic forge untap everything so what did we learn today untapping is better than scrying <laughs> Uh, let's float our mana, draw some cards, and a bonant scries their way to the concession button. Well, cool deck opponent. That was a that's a cool idea for a deck. I apologize, sort of, but I also I'm gonna hard match the smiley face, so I guess I don't feel that bad. <laughs>
we are back still comboing off so <laughs> this deck has been so enjoyable i just haven't stopped playing it usually when i play a deck i play like a few matches with it and then i'm like done with it and i just move on to the next deck this is my i just looked at my untapped stats uh 37th game with the deck 37 games in we started at the bottom and now we're here start at the bottom of platinum and now we are one win away from moving to diamond going all the way through platinum and i know i say oh this might go really well for us if our opponent's also an artifact ramp deck we won the die roll so we get to play karn on turn three and that probably wins us the game but out of those 37 matches we are uh 70 win rate 26 and 11 so i know i say did we break it a lot is a meme but in this case i think we might have actually broke it like this deck yes we lose to karn sometimes but other than that this deck is actually just like legitimately busted a 70 win rate is absurd it is absurd that is like literal best deck in the format win rate like this is t uh, assuming that win rate is maintained by other people not just me is straight up is just like literally the best deck in the format that is the win rate that would be the best deck in the format so i think we might have actually broke it in this case and uh i feel pretty good about where we're at because we have a karn the problem with karn in this matchup for our opponent is it means they can't use their mana rocks how can we lose from here how can we lose I think so we have the paradox engine we can probably combo next turn the only way i can see us losing is if karn dies if karn dies then maybe our opponent can combo off in some way i think what we do is play paradox engine and tick up karn the only way i could see karn dying would be if our opponent goes land karn turns cloud king into a creature and attacks our karn so karn at four means they shouldn't be able to kill karn and if we untap here we don't have a one ring but we do have mystic forge but if we untap odds of us comboing is pretty high pretty high opponent mines down sure oh well <clears throat> maybe we do have a one ring on second thought <laughs> maybe we do have a one ring uh okay let's try to win the game <laughs> uh how do we do this we only have one mana rock we need more mana all right power stone shard untap mine stone Float our mana, one ring, untap both mana rocks, draw a card, Ooh, opponent with the GG, yeah, I mean, we should win from here, float our mana, untap, cold steel heart, I mean, we could, we could fizzle, it hasn't happened yet, but it's possible, one ring, ooh, two, ooh, two lands, okay, uh, well, hmm, yeah, that's, we're a little pinched on mana right now. We only have two untapped mana rocks. How do we do this? Play Zelfren's Void, Forsaken Monument, to the bottom, I get. Wait, are we going to fizzle? Oh, no. I mean, even if we fizzle, I don't know if it matters because we have the Karn, but... So what we can do is we can Karn, awkwardly take Karn Silex, since it's the only thing cheap enough for us to cast to untap our stuff. We're just trying to get another one ring activation, basically. Untap everything. One ring. Draw three and wow we actually fizzled <laughs> yeah we have three mana two four drops in all lands out of all 37 games with the deck i so we've obviously lost with the deck this is the first time i've comboed and fizzled that hasn't happened before that is the that is the first time that i've actually had everything set up and just not actually done it so i guess that's a pretty good rate that means with the one ring we fizzle what three percent of the time or something less than that two point something uh, not bad not bad all right well your go opponent i mean i guess they could karn fire something up kill our karn maybe even if they did that though we have another karn and they're not going to be able to combo off with no mana so i think we still just win opponent oh of oh, our opponent's passing then this is yeah now this really is good game and our opponent scoops it up and i think we actually broke it that is the 70 percent win rate all the way through platinum ranking up to diamond with colorless one ring paradox engine storm uh, yeah not bad sweet 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 so that's how you can storm off with no colored mana with one ring and paradox engine on magic arena and i gotta say not only is the deck in my experience at least legitimately good like 70 percent win rates kind of insane this is the deck that really lets you feel the power of the ring like the one ring is a busted magic card in general like we've played it in a 
bunch of decks and just, you know, you cast it and get protection and draw a card and then maybe two the next turn. That is really, really strong. But until you play the One Ring with Paradox Engine and start untapping it a bunch of times each turn and literally draw your entire deck for four mana, you haven't really experienced the power of the rig. So if you got the wild cards, I would recommend putting this deck together. Yes, you are going to get wrecked by Karn sometimes. Occasionally you get raced by aggro, but the deck feels legitimately good and the power of the ring in this deck is pretty intoxicating. I, I could feel myself going all, you know, golem mode as I was going through the games. Like, I gotta get the precious, gotta keep drawing those cards, gotta storm off, gotta win the game. So anyway, that's the deck. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want even more magic, make sure to check out our video where we played all nine Nazgul's in modern, or maybe the one about the most hated card from every single year of Magic the Gathering.